Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking a little bit more about pulsars and specifically how these beautiful objects can actually acquire planets. Now this is based on a new study that has been published in July of 2017 so we're going to discover how a pulsar can actually acquire its own planets. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in one of the previous videos, or actually several previous videos, we talked about the systems of um, various pulsars that actually do have planets. As a matter of fact, the first exoplanet ever discovered was around a pulsar, and this is around a pulsar known as Lich. We don't have it in Universe Sandbox, but you can check out the previous video I, I made about this uh, an, an incredible and amazing pulsar. But what we're going to be doing today is talking about how pulsars actually may be uh, acquiring planets after they undergo supernova. In other words, how some of the massive stars, like for example, Rigel right here that I just launched across our own galaxy, the Milky Way, may one day go supernova, create a neutron star that might become a pulsar, and then actually acquire some planets. So first of all, let's make it go supernova. So we're going to explode Rigel and this will actually create a supernova right here. And what will remain behind is a pulsar. There, so there it is. There is that Rigel pulsar that is going to just kind of now fly through the galaxy. Now it doesn't actually look right just yet. So we might need to change this a little bit until it resembles a pulsar a little bit more because I think right now it kind of looks like a black hole, which is not what we're looking for. According to its radius and its mass, it's supposed to be um, a pulsar. So we're going to ignore the fact that it kind of looks black hole-ish because it does have these two streams, uh, these two jets that are being propelled uh, across the sky. So anyway, it's moving across the galaxy relatively fast at 200 kilometers per second. And as it moves across the galaxy, it's sort of creating this so-called bowl shock around it. As a matter of fact, right here around it, because it um, moves a little bit faster than it should, it's uh, creating this, it's creating a bull shock. Now this bull shock um, causes two things to happen. One of those things is that it basically creates a kind of a tail behind it. And the other thing is that it actually, due to interaction with the mag uh, its own magnetosphere and due to interaction um, with something that would resemble a heliosphere, um, it basically attracts some of the particles that start getting closer and closer to, to it. And as these particles get closer and closer, they actually start forming a kind of accretion disk again. And this accretion disk might not be actually visible here because we're running the simulation a little bit too fast. But you can kind of actually see all of the material that uh, is already present here from various interactions of this pulsar with the so-called interstellar space uh, that is usually full of stardust. Now, all of the stardust will eventually start creating the accretion disk, so let's see if we can maybe potentially create it here as well. Although chances are it's not going to stay around for too long. As a matter of fact, it seems that uh, this pulsar is unable to currently hold any of the accretion disk stuff. So we're going to have to recreate it uh, from scratch by going into a separate simulation. But first, let me just show you what happens as this pulsar flies across the galaxy. So basically, right now, it's flying across uh, the Milky Way galaxy and it's collecting all of this dust as it sort of accumulates into the accretion disks uh, or various accretion disks around the pulsar. So over several billion years, this amount can actually increase quite dramatically. And as a matter of fact, the scientists that published uh, the paper in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society uh, talked about the so-called very well-known pulsar known as uh, Geminga. And uh, this particular pulsar that's quite well known in uh, the pulsar circles, or basically to many astronomers, um, is about 800 light years away from us. And what we've discovered in Geminga is a very unusual composition or materials basically flying and orbiting around it and 
uh, all in all, the mass is several masses of Earth. Uh, so that by itself is quite unusual and allowed us to speculate that many of these pulsars that move very, really fast through the Milky Way may actually acquire materials that way and thus form their own planets. So here is this jamming uh, um, pulsar moving through interstellar space, collecting the dust. We're going to basically simulate how it will probably be creating um, these planets in the future. So as the gas approaches uh, the actual pulsar, it first starts to form a kind of a torus around uh, the pulsar. And eventually this torus will actually flatten out and create a relatively large um, ring around the pulsar. And as you can see, the pulsar itself is very, very brilliantly bright. So it does produce a little bit of heat, but maybe not enough to, uh, to heat up anything nearby. Although it does produce all kinds of other radiations that will most likely leave these planets uninhabited. So anyway... And so within a few uh, million years, or possibly within a few hundred million years, all of this material will start coalescing into basically a planetary ring. So here is a yellow ring I've created uh, for uh, Jaminga. And if, I, if we accelerate time, you'll see that all of the stuff is kind of slowly going to be spinning around. And some of it is going to get shot out into the outer solar system. Some of it will actually stay with Jaminga. But... Um, over time, some of these particles will actually uh, be coalescing into larger and larger objects. And within possibly uh, several million years, just like it happened originally in the solar system, uh, all of these particles will actually coalesce into a much larger object and possibly even several larger objects similar to the... Um, pulsar we've talked about previously known as Lich. There, there's several planets that we've discovered and all, all of them have really cool names. Uh, so just like that, Jaminga might also receive several planets. And years later, we might end up with the pulsar system that might actually have several planets orbiting around it. And all of these planets are uh, procedurally generated in this case, but for all we know, this is what uh, Jaminga and some of the other pulsars might experience as they fly through the interstellar space and collect um, various material and various rocks. So it, this is possibly how various pulsars actually do um, get materials to create new planets after uh, these stars undergo supernova. And this might also happen to things like white dwarfs and obviously black holes as well. So maybe somewhere out there, there are black hole systems that have very similar sort of planetary systems. And there might even be um, other unusual objects that we haven't really discovered yet, such as, for example, quasar stars that might have something similar as well. But for now, I think this is actually one of the cooler discoveries of 2017 and possibly one of the cooler hypotheses that might actually explain once and for all how pulsars such as Lich and of course Jaminga might actually be able to create planetary systems around them. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something more about pulsars from this video and now you know how these uh, systems acquire planets. In the next video, you might learn something else you didn't know, so do come back tomorrow and potentially subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Support this channel on Patreon. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Now let's accelerate time and see what happens to the system as the time advances.